I had this idea almost a whole year ago to do a life-size relief sculpture of a humpback whale that would also have a statement and raise awareness about whaling. Right now we're just securing the chicken wire onto the frame so that in just a little bit we are going to start paper mache over top of this. Um, and that's where the labels will be decoupaged to. So I'm just making sure everything's nice and tight so that it will be able to hold the clay when it's all done. First off, we had to get 16 sheets of plywood, which was not an easy task, and then cut out the shape of it from um, taking guesses from a model that I had made. So the issue of whaling is one that I'm very interested in because I don't think there's any place for whaling in the 21st century. So I came up with the idea of tying in those labels uh, to kind of bring around awareness that whaling still does exist. And then with this, I'm hoping to also raise some funds for both the Whaleman Foundation, which is a whale conservation organization where I kind of know the founder, and also Sea Shepherds Conservation Society. If you've ever seen the show Whale Wars, that is them. They go out and they actually intervene when people, usually the Japanese, are whaling. So hopefully it raises awareness for whales and whale conservation, but also pulls in some money for those two organizations. This entire whale is gonna be covered in paper mache. I have been soliciting a lot of help. Um, thankfully, it's a really good kind of community of artists here and everybody was willing to pitch in with the project. So I've had people doing everything from construction work, which is good because I've never really built anything before in my life. So of course I choose a 37 foot long whale as my first big project more people makes it all easier and it makes the project more meaningful I think. Right now I'm cutting out a section because the flipper of the whale is actually going to be installed right here so the tail is actually going to attach and come off the wall so most of it's going to be a relief sculpture but this is going to be free hanging so that people can get an idea of how big their tail actually is this piece will actually come from the body and come off the wall, so that way this whole tail piece will attach to it so that people will be able to actually walk under the tail and get a really good idea of how big these animals actually are. And so we worked last night trying to figure out exactly how to take something that was basically two-dimensional and make it completely three-dimensional. And all of this will be installed this week and then we have to chicken wire it and paper mache it while it's hanging from the ceiling, which is going to be quite an obstacle, but there will be a lot of lights and nights at the studio this week. So one of the problems with making a 37 foot long sculpture is where you put it. So each of these panels are sections of the whale that have been completely paper mache and then the paper mache part is actually going to be covered in whale meat labels that come from whale meat containers in Japan where they still eat whale meat regularly. Now back down. Okay, now back down. Yeah. Kick that side down. That looks good. Actually all the work that you see right now is going to be covered by wet clay. And so as the wet clay starts to dry during the duration of the show, which is about a month, it's going to start shrinking and cracking and exposing those whale meat labels underneath. So it's going to go from hopefully a full whale that looks very realistic to this kind of decomposing whale covered in these labels. Right here is where the flipper attaches and humpback whales have a flipper that's about a fourth of their body. So for a 37 foot long whale like we have here, it's about nine and a half feet long. It's going to be a little bit shorter and so that's just going to bolt in here. I wanted to kind of portray that this animal is huge and magnificent on its own. It has an intrinsic value and doesn't need to be hunted anymore. So just rolling out slabs after slabs after slabs. Cycled clay, we're using all recycled clay here for the project. And you can roll out a big flat sheet of clay at once. Uh, this way it's just a nice smooth sheet and you can cover a large area at one time. 
Uh, seems to be the most efficient way to cover a whale, though I don't know if there have been lots of tests done on the most efficient way to cover a whale in clay. There, that's where the eye will go? Yep, right about here. So their eyes actually sit pretty far down on their body and their lips kind of come. Goes all the way back, kind of there, and then comes down. And their mouth actually ends right about here. So their jaw is all that. They have very long jaws. Let's, um, let's do the tail. <laughs> when they first thought of it in doing a relief sculpture, uh, the tail became kind of an issue where there was no really good way to treat it unless it became completely three-dimensional. I really wanted to kind of give that size comparison to people of how big their tails are. And so it took just a little bit of engineering and finesse to get it to where it went from pretty much two-dimensional to fully three-dimensional. Another small crew of people to actually get the tail hung up how it is um, and make sure that it wasn't going to fall. But I love it. I love how it looks. I think the part with the labels turned out a little bit better than I expected, actually. Um, I mean, it's not done yet, but it's definitely turning out how I pictured it from the beginning, which is really exciting uh, since it's been such a long time in the making. Well, Thursday before the show, we ended up covering the entire whale frame with the clay. And then the focus on Friday was to sculpt in detail the face and get the coloring. The humpback whales are kind of a dark gray, kind of black on top, and then white on their belly and flipper. Uh, so we used actually kind of porcelain slip, which is just a watered down clay, to do the flipper in the belly, and then this really black iron to do the coloring on the top to get it as realistic as possible, which I think brought the whole idea of this very realistic humpback whale into the studio. Just as I had planned, but maybe it happened a little bit faster than I expected, the clay shrank and is falling off the frame. And I put the clay on pretty thin to help it along with the cracking process because uh, we were kind of scared that maybe it wouldn't crack and fall off, but pieces were actually falling off as the show was going on, which was interesting. So it's doing what the clay does, which is part of the whole concept of this clay cracking off, the skin cracking off and revealing these labels underneath. So as you see down the body, and on the floor, there are the pieces of the clay skin. So I really wanted to get the face right, and especially the eye. The eye of a humpback whale is incredible. Um, and they're very inquisitive. They will look you straight in the eye, but their eye is that big, so they're looking at you in the face sometimes when you're interacting with them. I spent probably four or five hours just on the face trying to get it exactly right. And I really wanted the eye to kind of be looking back towards where people are going to be standing in the studio so that it kind of makes eye contact with them. This project came together basically like I planned, which is surprising. I was afraid it wasn't going to. Um, but this is kind of what I visioned. Um, some things changed and evolved with the project. The labels got uh, changed a little bit from what I first expected, but they changed in a really good way. Um, and yeah, the whole idea of this whale being complete on the wall at one point in time and then the slow decay of it into this very man-made, very um, kind of industrial feel underneath is kind of what I envisioned, kind of the whole concept I came up with many, many months ago. And so it's really nice to actually see it come together as I planned. So my ultimate goal is A, to raise awareness um, and bring about this concept of the whales being there, being beautiful in their full form and then uh, what we do to them. But my hope is really that this project can continue on, that the small repairs that need to be made to the frame can be made and that this whale can go to another gallery or permanent home somewhere where I could either reinstall it so that it's a full whale again and have the whole installation where the clay comes off or just sell the frame in itself 
And that money um, is going to go towards whale conservation organizations that I support, both the Whale Man Foundation and Sea Shepherd Conservation Society. So that's my ultimate goal, is hopefully to find a home for it uh, and put that money to good use helping whales in the wild.